Hello everyone. So today's lecture is on preventive dentistry one, which is on infant oral health care. So the intended learning outcomes at the end of the lecture, you will be able to describe about the infant oral health care, the dental home, and the anticipatory guidance. So we will move on to the background of the infant oral healthcare and anticipate anticipatory guidance so infants is the word which is taken from latin uh, infants which means unable to speak or speechless and it is a more formal or a, or a specialized synonym for baby or the very young offspring of a human so ecc that is early childhood caries uh, which is one or more than one indicates that is dmft that is decayed missing filled in 71 months of age or younger while severe ecc is any signs of smooth surface caries in a child younger than three years of age so there is a need for the foundation in which a lifetime of preventive education and dental care can be built up in order to acquire the optimal health into the child and adulthood so what are the consequences of ECC that is early childhood caries which includes there are higher risk of new carious lesions in both the primary which in turn affects the permanent dentition also hospitalization emergency room visit because of the uh, dental caries and deep dental caries high treatment costs loss of school days diminished ability to learn and reduced oral health related quality of life so the restorative care to treat the ecc or the early childhood caries requires the use of sedation or general anesthesia which again is associated with high um, high cost and health risk also so there is a high recurrence uh, of these lesions um, subsequent or after the procedures and therefore it, uh, there is more emphasis of prevention and arrestment of the disease uh, to manage the early childhood caries so moving on to the infant oral health care so the initiating infant oral health care, du uh, care during the infancy is ideal because that again helps in stoppage or uh, prevents the development of carious lesion it um, uh, also helps in uh, reducing the habit of which may become detrimental with time and entire dental preventive armamentarium is available during the infancy stage so the infant oral health care affords the unique opportunity to start with a clean slate uh, with the goal of maintaining a good oral health throughout life and at no other point in so the infant uh, oral health uh, is the time where we have to do the preventive measures so this will provide us with a good oral health in childhood and adolescence so what are the goals of infant oral health care the first there are six goals which we have to remember is the first one being the break the cycle of early childhood caries disrupt the acquisition of harmful microflora manage the risk or benefit of the habit establish a dental home for the health or harm impart optimal fluoride protection arming the parents through anticipatory guidance so all these three uh, the six points we will be discussing in details in further slides so the first being break the cycle of early childhood babies so uh, in uh, break the cycle of early childhood caries where ecc is a cyclic in nature in which a child is afflicted or remains uh, a child who is afflicted or at a risk of development of uh, early childhood caries even when pre preventive services are available so it's a cyclic process even though uh, preventive measures are provided there is a risk of development of early childhood caries so early childhood caries progresses rapidly and by the time 
the treatment is provided the disease can be extensive and uh, enough to warrant the use of sedation or general anesthesia this again increase, increases the burden of or the price or high cost untreated ca cases of early childhood caries can lead to potentially life threatening infections failure to thrive learning difficulties hospitalization and emergency room visits so any untreated cases of early childhood caries can lead to life threatening situations like ex extensive infections and overall the cost to treat the early childhood caries is caries are high as i have already discussed so the treatment to uh, treat the early childhood caries again becomes expensive or higher next is disrupt the acquisition of the harmful microflora so how can we disrupt the acquisition of the harmful microflora so once the child is born uh, when there is absence of teeth there is no microorganisms that are present in the oral cavity harmful microorganisms but once the teeth uh, erupts into the oral cavity the bacteria comes and adheres to the tooth surface so it needs the bacteria needs a hard surface for it to accumulate so the transition is usually from the parents or the caregivers so children are inoculated with caries initiating bacteria by vertical transmission that is from the caretakers or the primarily the mothers if the child's caretaker harbors if the caretaker be it a mother or the person who is ca taking care of has a virulent microorganism then the transmission via kissing sharing food eating from the same utensils and other contacts can occur and initiate the caries progress to prevent the transmission of the bacteria from the uh, mother to the child or the caretaker to the child reduce the caretaker's bacterial load through the dental treatment increase oral health related uh, literacy improved oral health dietary and hygiene habits and uh, you also need to advise uh, the use of the antibacterial or chemotherapeutic agents the transmission of bacteria can also be uh, reduced by the by prenatal counseling along with maternal oral health and infant oral health forms uh, the chain for prevention of dental uh, bacterial acquisition so in um, infants you have to maintain a favorable oral health environment and healthy biofilm by establishing a low sugar intake uh, diet adequate amount of fluoride exposure needs to be used and effective use of oral hygiene practices needs to be done the next goal for infant oral health care is manage the risk benefit of habits so a habit can be no, um, nutritive um, or non nutritive in the non nutritive nutritive sucking habit example a pacifier or thumb sucking traditionally what used to be done so if a a uh, child was only taken to a dentist if a habit is been lingering for a while and the child is old enough causing some amount of dental problems but infant healthcare providers uh, counsel the parents allows the dentist to enter into the habit continuum and uh, work along with the family in stopping the habit and transition Uh, the habit uh, uh, transitioning the child from the habit out of the habit so the goal next goal of infant oral health care is establish a dental home so dental home as defined by the american academy of pediatric dentistry as the ongoing relationship between the dentist and the patient inclusive of all the aspects of oral health care delivered in a comprehensive continuously accessible coordinated and family centered way the dental home should be established no later than 12 months of age 
and include reference to a dentist specialist whenever necessary care is initiated through a non threatening preventive services and early establishment of the dental home is cost effective the next goal is impart optimal fluoride protection so fluoride toothpaste and in office fluoride varnish applications are effective necessary for early childhood caries prevention daily use of fluoride toothpaste initiated immediately after the eruption of the first tooth is the best clinical preventive practice for early childhood caries and to prevent the dental uh, prevent development of fluorosis due to excessive amount of fluoride being ingested the current american academy of pediatric dentistry guidelines on the fluoride therapy recommends the use of no more than a smear or a rice size amount of fluoride toothpaste for children of 3 years of age so these are the few guidelines that is provided by the american Ac- academy of pediatric dentistry the sixth and the last goal for infant or oral health care is arming the parents through anticipatory guidance so the infant oral health care is dependent on the protective factors at home the parents are cornerstone of the child health care so the dentist must empower the parent to provide a good preventive measure at home and participate the oral health changes in a rapidly growing child and this is accomplished through the concept of anticipatory guidance the next we move on to after the goals of infant oral health care is the health supervision so the health supervision is defined as the longitudinal relationship between the dentist and the family that is individualized to maximum uh, to maximize the healthy outcomes for that particular child so the, uh, this is a departure from every 6 months recall approach that is all too common to dental practice and has no strong evidence based support some children require more frequent visits and others require less so this again depends upon the uh, the oral condition of the child if a child is suffering from severe early childhood caries he needs to come every 3 months instead of every 6 months so the health supervision depends upon a child but on child to child so in, in infant oral health the dentist assesses the risk at the initial exam examination offers the preventive advice using the anticipatory guidance and administers the necessary treatment and prevention services outcomes are the measures that indicates the success so the outcome measures the success so these can be physical that is a reduction in the gingival inflammation cognitive understanding of the caries process and behavioral that is elimination of nighttime feeding habits for example the presence of plaque on a primary teeth in infants is a strong predictor of future dental caries so after oral hygiene instructions parents can monitor success by looking for the presence of plaque so you have to guide the parents and the child uh, in the anticipatory guidance so if you find any plaque on the tooth surface the parents need to be guided and told after the removal of the plaque parents need to give, be given the oral hygiene instruction and the parents have to monitor throughout to see the uh, presence or to look for any presence of new plaque formation so so another example that can we can uh, instruct the parents is by asking them to check the child's teeth for initial signs of early childhood caries by lifting the child's lip to look for a white spot so the parents can lift the child's uh, lip to check for any white spot lesions on the tooth surface any white spot lesions indicates the early childhood caries uh, the lift 
the lip protocol is recommended period periodically based on the child's risk a desired outcome would be a parent who arranges an earlier dental visit because they have noted the presence of white spot lesions so if the uh, if the parents have noted a white spot lesions and they come to you before your uh, appointed uh, or recall date then this would be uh, this would provide the child a preventive treatment instead of a more extensive treatment and uh, treatment next we move on to the anticipatory guidance so anticipatory guidance is defined as proactive counseling that addresses the significant physical emotional psychological and developmental changes that will occur in children during the interval between the health supervision visits so the anticipatory guidance is you are guiding the uh, child through the uh, physical emotional psychological and developmental changes during the health supervision visits so the anticipatory guidance is the complement to a risk assessment it addresses the protective factors aimed at preventing the oral health problems anticipatory guidance regarding the characteristic of a normal healthy oral cavity should occur during the infant oral health visit throughout the follow up dental visit so this allows the parent to measure the measure against any changes such as but not limit to growth delays traumatic injuries and poor oral hygiene or pres presence of carious lesions so an example of anticipatory guidance would be a discussion on ambulation of an infant with a warning about possible tooth trauma that often occurs in infants while uh, learn when the, while a child learns to stand and walk uh, the uh, the guidance or the anticipatory guidance has defined protocols for each age group in it and which starting from 6 to 12 months to adolescence so we will be discussing in further slides the topics to address in this age group includes the oral development fluoride adequacy non nutritive habits diet and nutrition oral hygiene and injury prevention these six areas capture the major concerns related to the oral conditions of dental caries periodontal disease trauma and malocclusions so the moving on to the oral development uh, oral development is covered to assess the presence of teeth the any eruptive disorders and breathing problems and in this what else can be discussed is the tooth development and the chronology of eruption can help the parents better understand the implications of delayed or accelerated tooth emergence the discussion regarding atypical frenum attachments can may be associated with problems with breastfeeding phrenoplasty or phrenectomy may be a successful approach to facilitate breed, uh, breast feeding so in oral development we will be discussing about all the three that is the presence of or the eruption of the first tooth eruption time or any uh, eruptive disorders any teething problems any uh, associated problems with the frenum of uh, feeding difficulty all should be discussed all uh, are discussed in the oral development so speech and language are the integral component of a child's early development abnormal delay in speech and language production can be recognized early with referrals made to address these concerns communication and coordination of appliance therapy with a speech and language professional can assist in the timely treatment of speech disorders so if a child has any speech abnormality uh, or abnormal delay in the speech and language development so this should be recognized early and the child should be referred to the associated uh, to the concerned uh, person for language and uh, speech development 
so assessment of any developmental milestones example any finer gross motor skeletal uh, skills language or social interactions is crucial for early recognition recognition of the potential delays and appropriate reference to the therapeutic so services so any developmental delays or uh, in the speech or language and uh, in the milestones should be referred to the concerned um, services so that can be treated as soon as possible next we move on to the fluoride adequacy so the fluoride adequacy refers to a consideration whether the drinking water that is the community versus the bottle provides the optimal fluoride it also addresses the effectiveness of fluoride dentifrice in reducing the dental caries and the appropriate amount of uh, uh, fluoride to reduce the risk of fluorosis the role of fluorides in newly erupted teeth may be at a higher risk of developing caries especially during the post eruption maturation process so we need to tell or inform the parents about the role of fluorides in a newly erupted teeth that may be at a higher risk of developing caries especially in during the post eruption in the maturation process next is the non nutritive oral habits counseling is done regarding the non nutritive oral habits like digit sucking or passive sucking bruxism abnormal tongue thrust which may apply abnormal forces to the tooth and then to alveolar structures so it is important to discuss the need for an early uh, suck suckling need to early, uh, discuss the need for early suckling and the need to wean infants from these habits before the malocclusion or skeletal dysplasias occur next is diet and nutrition so the development of dietary habits and childhood food preferences appear to be established early and may affect the oral health as well as the general health and well being of a child so the establishment of a dental home no later than 12 months of age allows the dietary and nutrition counseling to occur early so this helps in the parents to develop proper oral health habits early in their child's life rather than trying to change the established ha unhealthy habits later so the anticipatory guidance also guides uh, through the diet and nutrition which helps in establishing the food preferences of the child early in life than changing the habit which are already developed early, uh, unhealthy habit so during infancy counseling should focused on bre breastfeeding bottle or no spill cup usage concerned with uh, night time feeding frequency of in uh, in between meal consumption of sh uh, sugar sweetened beverages like sweetened milk 100% juice soft drinks fruit drinks soft sport drinks and snacks as well as special diets should be discussed with the parents The AAP American Academy of Pediatrics recommends exclusive breastfeeding for about 6 months followed by continued breastfeeding as complementary food are introduced with continuation of breastfeeding for 1 year or longer as mutually desired by the parent and infant so uh, the AAP recommends exclusively only breastfeeding that should be done for the first 6 months after which the breast feeding should be used as a complementary along with other food in combination and the breast feeding should be can be continued for one year or longer as this, uh, desired by the mother and the infant so the best recommendation for caries prevention for mothers who are willing to breast feed including at night time should uh, is to establish a diet which is low in simple carbohydrates and sugar when other foods and beverages are introduced in addition to breastfeeding brush the teeth of the child 
twice a day especially at bed bed time and consider a smear amount of fluoride uh, toothpaste so if um, for a recommendation for caries prevention is if the parents are uh, if the mother is willing to breastfeed along with the other diets then uh, the complementary diet should have less amount of sugar and um, along with breastfeeding in the night and but the parents need to see that they brush the teeth of the child twice in a day especially at bedtime and they have to use a, a small smear amount of toothpaste which is fluoridated excessive consumption of carbohydrates fats and sodium contribute to poor health uh, health dietary analysis and the role of dietary choices on oral health malnutrition and obesity should be addressed through nutritional and preventive oral health counseling and periodic visits so the dietary analysis and the diet uh, role of diet choices on the health related and uh, malnutrition and obesity should be discussed with the parents and they should be counseled about the type of diet now moving on to the oral hygiene so the oral hygiene practices are assessed by asking the parents how involved are they uh, uh, while uh, with the cleaning of the oral structures such questioning should be uh, lead to a discussion of tooth clean cleaning implements the timing the frequency as well as pos positioning of the child for oral care and the amount of fluoride toothpaste that is used uh, you need to assess the um, you, you need to ask questions which are open ended and you have to ask the parents how frequently do they clean the child's teeth how what is the positioning of the child what is the type of oral uh, measures they do they take for cleaning the amount of fluoride toothpaste use Uh, the means of bacteria transmission from the mother or the caregiver to the infant and the ways to avoid such transmission should be discussed with the parents thoroughly so the oral hygiene counseling involves the parent and the patient initially the oral hygiene is the responsibility of the parent as the child is very young and um, and the child develops the home care is preferred jointly by the parent and the child so initially because the child cannot do the, all these uh, cannot take care of the oral cavity and oral hygiene practices um, uh, by itself so the parents need to take care of the uh, take care of the responsibility but uh, this has to be done mutually uh, jointly by the parent and the child so when a child demonstrates the understanding and the ability to perform the personal hygiene techniques the healthcare professional should counsel the uh, child so the effectiveness of the home care should be monitored at every visit visit so every time the child comes to the dental clinic the how well he is brushed or taken care of his oral health should be monitored at every visit which includes a discussion on the consistency of oral hygiene preventive activities including the amount of fluoride exposure next is the injury prevention so historical information uh, on injury prevention moves beyond uh, the trauma to general health issues like play objects electrical cords home child proofing car seats use so uh, provide age appropriate injury prevention counseling for orofacial trauma you need to provide age appropriate uh, uh, counseling to the parents um, for orofacial trauma as uh, motor coordination develops and the child grows older the parent or the patient should be counseled on additional safety and preventive measures which includes the athletic mouth guards for sporting activities next we will be discussing about the motivational interviewing techniques so mi that is motivational interviewing techniques has been successful in promoting change in the health behaviors of the child and the parent so mi is a personalized approach 
the based on parents different parents and upon the child's need that raises the caregivers and the child awareness of the problems the setting oral health goals and co-evaluating if the current behaviors are consistent with the goals next we move on to the dental home uh, the concept of dental home is derived from the american academy of pediatrics uh, of from the definition medical home so the essential concept of medical home as described by aap states that uh, there should be a relationship between the practitioner and the family along with the child so this relationship will foster care and accessible coordinated and it will be compassionate and uh, the child will be provided with preventive instruction uh, immunization and co uh, counseling and anticipatory guidances so uh, dental home assists child and the parents to achieve the optimum health oral health early oral health in examination in initiation of preventive services uh, offers resources for dis, uh, decision making by the parent risk assessments for oral diseases monitor growth and development appropriate referrals and interaction with community oral oral health programs so this uh, dental home concept reinforces the need for early intervention uh, with the optimal preventive strategies that were chosen uh, based on the risk of the patient and would encourage the first dental visit to be approximately by the first year of age anticipatory guidance to the parents so that they are aware of the child's growth and development as well as the advantages of the dental home so the dental home should be coordinated specialized care of the child if necessary moving on to the components of the dental home which should be accessible family centered continuous comprehensive coordinated compassionate culturally competent anticipatory guidance and a referral network for specialized care the first being accessible so the source of care is close to home and accessible to family and prepared for ha handling the emergencies so care provided in the child's community all insurance acceptable accepted and changes in coverage is accommodated the source of care which is close to home and accessible to the family minimal hassle encountered with payment the office ready for treatment in emergency situations office is non biased in dealing with children with special health care needs and dentist knows community needs and resources that is the fluoride in the water next the family centered the recognition of the centeredness of the family unbiased complete information is shared on an ongoing basis the low parent or the child anxiety improves the care care protocols are comfortable to the family that is behavior management and appropriate role of parents in home care is established so when the anxiety of the child and the parent is less it improves the quality of the care rendered so the role of the parents in home care procedure is established next is it should be continuous so appropriate recall schedules are coordinated based on the needs of the children regularly so care for the children regular early and continuous continues to follow them periodically through life the same primary care provider from infancy through adolescence individual uh, individualized preventive dental health program based upon a case risk of the child and the peri periodic dental risk assessment then appropriate recall appointments are based on the child's need and the continuity of the care is better owing to recall system versus the episodic care coordination of complex dental treatment is possible in traumatic injuries and 
liaison with the medical providers for children with special health care needs is improved that is a congenital heart disease next is it should be comprehensive that is health care is available 24 hours per day per week preventive and primary uh, preventive primary and tertiary care are provided in the same place so in comprehensive should be the comprehensive assessment for oral diseases and conditions should be done acute care and preventive services to be uh, done health care should be available for 24 7 emergency access is to be ensured and care manager and primary care dentist are uh, should be in the same place next it should be coordinated that is records are maintained in a centralized place that is family is linked to support education and community services information should be centralized records to be centralized uh, schools workshop therapy linkages established are known that is cleft lip and palate care interactions with early intervention program schools early childhood education and child care programs member of medical and dental communities and other public and private community agencies to ensure the awareness of age specific oral health issues it should be compassionate that is the dentist child family relationship is firmly established Ex uh, it should be expressed demonstrated concern for child and the family example of cheerful greeting by the dentist and the staff uh, shows a compassionate behavior of the dentist towards the child and the family the dentist child relationship is established the family relationship is also established children are less anxious owing to the familiarity it should be culturally competent the cultural background of each individual is recognized valued and respected uh, staff may speak other languages and uh, know the dental terminology mechanism is established for communication for the ongoing care and specialized resources are known and proven if needed next we move on to the anticipatory guidance it's a proactive counseling of parents and patients about the developmental changes that will occur in the interval between the health supervision vis visits the growth and developmental issues that is teething digit or pacifier habits opportunity to discuss is the oral development the fluoride adequacy oral hygiene diet and nutrition habits injury and trauma Next is referral network for specialized care. The trusted network of specialist doctors and dentists uh, are to be referred. Referred at an appropriate time for orthodontic treatment has to be done. Referrals to any physician for problems that are related to the general health example like malnutrition, refractory problems. Increased trust in dentist expresses uh, compassion by the dentist and better dentist family relationship moving on to the examination of the infant use of a dental chair is unnecessary and the least preferred approach so the parent participates as a learner and the immobilizer teaching about the oral cavity occurs during the process of examination the child may cry which is useful when when the child is crying because by crying the child is helping by opening his mouth the preferred approach to the infant examination is the knee to knee position in which the parent and the dental provider sits face to face um, and their knees touch and ideally mesh slightly creating a flat surface on which the child can rest the infant initially is held facing the parent and then reclined onto the lap of the dentist then the parent carefully lays the child in the dentist lap while holding the child's hand 
after which the parent has the infant's leg and the torso uh, and uses the elbows to hold the child's feet in place the parent is responsible for holding the child's hand and the dentist then stabilizes the child's head the examination can occur wherever a suitable light can be found and the closeness of the parent and the provider may be concerned for some parents and it should be explained before you begin the procedure during the examination which may take maybe uh, only seconds the dentist has the opportunity to demonstrate the oral hygiene and point out the oral structures of importance to the parents so most infants will cry Uh, briefly during the examination procedure of uh, which helps in opening the mouth wide open and parents may need to be assured that the child uh, cry- crying is normal response and it is to it is expected at the completion of the examination uh, the child is returned to the parent who can cuddle and console the child as needed children of this age are far more likely to have seen a physician for regular visits so delays in cognitive physical emotional and gross motor development are usually known by the parents uh, prior to the first dental visit so the dentist should be familiar with the developmental milestones for the children from birth to the age of 3 years and advise families for the need for a medical evaluation when problems are noted or any suspicion of any developmental problem that exist next is the caries risk assessment uh, the caries risk assessment is the determination of the likelihood of the incidence of caries or a new caries and that is the number of new cavitated or incipient lesions during a certain time period or the likelihood that there will be a change in the size or activity of the lesion which is already present so the caries risk assessment tool it it fosters the treatment of the disease process in instead of treating the outcome of the disease it gives an understanding of the disease factor for a specific patient and aids in individualizing the preventive discussions it individualizes selects and determines the frequency of preventive and restorative treatment for a patient and anticipates the caries progression or stabilization so an essential part of the infant oral health visit is the individual review of the risk factors so by eliminating the risk factors before the disease that occurs and the disease process that can be prevented in the immediate as well as the distant future that can be obtained from the caries risk assessment so an example that we can learn is if a child or an infant who sleeps with a bottle or sippy cup uh, of a sweetened sugar beverage and uh, there is no dental caries which is present intervention would focus on eliminating the habit of uh, sleeping with the sippy cup or bottle and diminishing the risk of developing developing early childhood caries uh, the etiology of early childhood caries is multifactorial complex therefore the current caries risk assessment models is a combination of factors which includes the diet the amount of fluoride exposure the host susceptibility and the microflora analysis and consideration of how these factors interact with social cultural and behavioral factors so for uh, analyzing the caries risk assessment how we have tools that is caries risk assessment tool or uh, caries assessment tool and camera so cat that is caries assessment tool is used for children between 0 to 5 years of age uh, and camera is uh, for 0 to 6 years of age in children so based on the caries assessment tool you have uh, uh, different questions which you can classify a child into a low risk moderate risk or a high risk uh, group 
So, uh, based on the clinical condition, the environmental characteristics and the health condition of the child. So, we have moved on to the end of the lecture. So, but we will be uh, slightly discussing about what we have read or discussed in the uh, this lecture. So, I have discussed about the infant oral health care. The uh, why do we need the infant oral health care? The goals of infant oral health care, which includes the break the cycle of the early childhood caries, disrupt the acquisition of harmful microflora, manage the risk or the benefit of habits, establish a dental home for health, impart optimal fluoride, and arming the parents through the anticipatory guidance. Then we have also discussed about the uh, dental home and the health supervisions that needs to be maintained the anticipatory guidance then we have discussed about the caries uh, assessment caries risk assessment so as we have come to the end of the lecture uh, you have to read about it in details from the books that we have already uh, told that uh, and uh, there will be a discussion or um, an assignment will be put up in the Google Classroom. Thank you.